everyone, and welcome to Low Kick MMA. I am Maria Morales, and I am joined today by the PFL heavyweight contender, Mo Doris. Mo, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and th well, thank you for joining us because I know how hard it is to have to do these things when, you know, fight week, trying oh, to make yeah. sure you got weight, everything else going on. So the fact yeah. that you're here with a smile, you know, mm -hmm. it just makes everything a lot easier. Oh, yeah, man. It's, it's a pleasure to be on. Um, yes, it's very busy. It's a lot of stuff for us to, you know, do. Um, but, you know, the one good thing about being here on a quarantine is that uh, there's not so many things I can do other than train and do these interviews. So, you know, it's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Well, you know, I want to kind of jump in because you, you hit on one of the things off the break, which is, you know, obviously still in the state of the world, you got to quarantine, you got to be away from your family as you're preparing for these fights. And I just wanted to ask you, I mean, you have a beautiful family, you have, you know, young children, but your sons are getting a little bit older. Yeah. How, I'm assuming that they understand that like dad is fighting. Mm -hmm. do, do they watch the fights? You know, do they try to like give you feedback or, or, or just kind of participate <laughs> in the process? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They love, they love, uh, uh, they love, you know, that fight and everything. Uh, they come when I train, they come to the gym, actually, they do jujitsu also at the gym and, um, you know, they're, they're very critical of the fights, you know, a lot, uh, you know, they've got to see a lot. They got to see a lot. And most of my fights, uh, end in victory and, you know, they had their two cents to add when it didn't go my way. <laughs> Um, so that, that's definitely been pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. That's one of those things, right? Like you always feel like you're tough. You're your own toughest critic until you have mm -hmm. kids. Cause they'll, right. let you know. <laughs> <laughs> they'll let you know real fast. Oh, they'll let you know real fast. Right. There's no cut cards. <laughs> so, so speaking of kids, one of the things that I, um, you know, really admire about you is the fact that on top of pursuing your own career, which in and of itself is a huge challenge you actually like are a head coach for a high school wrestling team. Oh yeah. How in the world are you dedicating? Cause you know, my husband coach wrestling, all, my son's wrestled all through high school. So like, I know the commitment. Oh yeah. How do you balance that? Well, that, that was definitely uh, tough. I, um, what happened was how I even got the head coaching job. Um, I was, you know, doing some, um, I forget what holiday it was, but we were taking pictures with my family at this this venue that had a lot of, you know, props set up uh, at a festival. It was like a fall festival type thing. And, um, you know, somebody came to me, he's like, hey, uh, their astronaut doesn't have a football coach. They're talking about canceling the season. And I was like, canceling the season? I'm like, what about, you know, the guys who've been wrestling last year and the third? Right. Like, they're going to, they're gonna, you know, lose it. And so I, I told him, I was like, hey, uh, you know, well, if the AD reaches out to me, you know, I'll be willing, you know, to step in and, and coach. Mm -hmm. And at the time, you know, you know, people come up to you and tell you things and, you know, they're full of crap a lot of times. Right. Um. So, you know, I thought the guy was just talking maybe, you know, I didn't think nothing of it too much. Just coaching wrestling has always been something that I wanted to do. I assisted at um my alma mater high school, uh, Titusville High School Terriers, and uh, for like three years, just assistant coach coming in on my time and uh, working with some guys. And um and full time assistant coach um for in 2017 before I had joined the PFL in 2018 mm -hmm. and I had a lot of fun doing it and I actually missed it um th I was helping with the football and the, and the wrestling but I moved to eventually moved to Daytona and was away from it and uh and I missed it so you know I when I told him that I was sincere um that I would do it so you know about a week later I get a call from this number I don't recognize and it's the AD of the athletic director of the school, you know, telling me, you know, what's going on. And, um, and what I had to do was I had to, since it's been a while since I coached, I had to finish one of my courses and finish my CPR course. And I had like two days or a day to do it. And so I just crammed it, got it done, passed the test. Um, and then, you know, joined the team and it's been, it was, it was a great experience, you know, to at my age at, you know, where I'm at with my experience, to, you know, get a head coaching job at a high school, you know, it was a great opportunity. Um, it was, it was definitely different during the pandemic, all yeah. the things we had to do differently, but, you know, when you see these kids, you know, start day one and, you know, you put them through workouts and you, you give them technique and to see them just transform throughout the season until where they end up toward the end is 
uh, something fulfilling about that, that, you know, you, you can't really find other places. And uh, it was definitely a pleasure, you know, you know, coaching and, and having that opportunity. And uh, as far as balancing it with the training, um, I train mostly in the mornings anyways. So I would train in the mornings, uh, you know, meal prep and stuff throughout the day and then mm -hmm. head over there and uh, coach them in, at night. And then, you know, every once in a while I got in, got in the mix with them, rolled around with my heavyweight and, and uh, showed them some of my lifts when I had them lifting and ran with them some of the days. And it was cool for them. They, you know, they enjoyed, you know, having the coach out there going with through what they went through. And then they found out I was a fighter because they most of them didn't even know. And there's like, yo, I saw that you fight. I was like, yeah, I do a little bit. He's like, I saw you fight on ESPN. I was right, like, right. Yeah, That's not yeah. a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, they're like, oh, snap. Yeah, this is coach. And they started, next thing you know, the video started circulating and stuff. And it, they was all excited about it and stuff. And it was cool. Yeah, but say because you you actually even had some kids that like at the beginning of the season were like brand new to the sport, like almost make it to states, right? Yeah, we had um, you know, we had two guys that was a couple matches away from uh making the states. One of them, he wrestled when he was a kid. Um, he was a freshman actually, and he he was one match away from making it to states. Um, and then I had another, and that, that was Preston and Khalil. He was removed from the sport for a while. He was a junior now, and he came back in halfway throughout the season. And he was uh, two matches away from uh, making it to stage. And when he first got back, he was totally out of the sport. He he had a lot of potential, uh, but he had a he had a lot to you know to practice and you know drill. And he was a hard worker. He was he was he won an award for the hardest worker on the team. So you know uh, that helped that helped him out to you know get to the position to where he almost made it to states also. And uh and uh, that was that was great. A lot of coaches came to me after the season and like even toward the end of the season and say, hey, look. He's like, what they look like last year compared to what they look like now is a whole new new thing. And uh you definitely did a great job. And it was it was it was great to hear that from my colleagues. So I have to be honest, like you can hear the excitement in your voice mm -hmm. as you're talking about this experience with coaching. Um you know, when you look at it, because it's it's very different being a coach versus just being a fighter or or an athlete in any sport. Yep. Do you do you feel like you have more passion for one versus the other? And and you know, and you maybe you do, maybe you don't. But do you also then maybe see a career in coaching once your days in the in the cage are done? Yeah, and you know, that have to be you know realistic. You know, I'm um uh, I've just turned thirty three this year. So I got a couple years, a couple years left, but you know, it's, it's good to start building on the future. And, uh, mm -hmm. and like I said, I never planned on, on being a head coach uh, until after I was done, but uh, to have the opportunity to do it, I couldn't pass up on opportunity and, you know, getting this experience now. So, you know, whenever I walk away, you know, I'll have experience. Obviously I have experience in doing it, but right. it's different. It's this is different when you coaching. And I, I also feel that, when I coach, it helps me look at the sport from a different angle mm -hmm. where when I'm competing or doing it, I'm not looking at. So then I can criti I can critique myself uh, when I train and, you know, and remember the things that I'm, I'm when I'm looking and seeing and when I'm doing it. And I think it definitely helps me with actually, you know, being an athlete. No, absolutely. And, you know, let's talk about you being an athlete, right? Because obviously you're quarantined preparing for yep. PFL. You are one of the, well, actually, you're the only fighter in the heavyweight division um, and one of the few fighters that's been there since day one. How have you seen the PFL evolve over these three seasons that you've been with the organization? Uh, it's been it's been it's been an awesome experience. Um, you know, since I got here day one, you know, they took care of they took care of the fighters. Uh, they did, you know, everything in their power to make sure we were comfortable, make sure we were taken care of. And I truly believe that has a lot to do with, you know, Ray Sifo being a fighter himself, knowing what we go through, knowing the the cuts, knowing the the uh, anxiety and, the, um, you know, stuff that the fighters go through to where that, you know, he can help make us feel comfortable. Know, you know, they hook us up with gear when we get here to take care, make sure we get a food. We got our per diems or they provide food for us uh, while we're here and the per diem since we're here for the quarantines. And uh, just going, you know, over and beyond to, you know, make sure the fighters having the best experience as possible. And, you know, I didn't have that in, in any other organization I fought before. Right. Um, and, you know, even even when I was on the Ultimate Fighter, you know, they did they did a good job. But um, the PFL has, has been, you know, the best so far. And, and I love, you know, fighting for them and seeing them, you know, show after show, show after show, just get better at what they're doing and, mm -hmm. um, 
um, getting it getting it down packed, you know, the formula on, on how they're doing things, bringing other people into the organization, Kevin Hart, Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis mm-hmm. is like my one of my favorite football players of all time. Um, seeing him step in was was huge. Uh, Wiz Khalifa, one of my favorite rappers, he's mm-hmm. he's now with us, you know. So just yeah. just seeing seeing the moves that they're making is is um is it's great, man, and and it's exciting uh, to be a part of this organization. And you know, if I was to finish my fight days with this organization, you know, I would be totally fine with that. Amazing. And and listen, you're you're still in the mix. I mean, obviously, you suffered a, a, a very disappointing loss in your first fight of the season. But the heavyweight division is like just wide open. It's so wide open, right? So, mm-hmm. like, you know, I was kind of doing the math before we jumped on, and I'm like, man, if he's able to pull out, you know, a first round stoppage, mm-hmm. he's right back up, you know, in yeah. the mix, looking at, at making the playoffs without an issue. Like, mm-hmm. how much pressure does that add to you going into the fight, understanding that, like, if this happens, this is immediately mm-hmm. where I am versus, yep. you know, if I go all three rounds or something else mm-hmm. happens, you know, you kind of still have your fate in your hands a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, uh, you know, I've, I've been through this uh, in 2019. Um, I had a, a defeat to Kel- uh, Tiller um, mm-hmm. with the Kimura, you know, I got caught slipping and I was out of the picture and then all of a sudden, boom, I'm right back in it with a first round knockout right. um, over at Streffy. So, you know, I've been here before, you know, um, my opponent, he's in the playoffs pretty much. He's got him a spot in the playoffs. He, uh, I don't know how that's going to affect him coming into the fight. Um, me, as you, as you know, I'm, I'm coming for the first round finish. Right. Um, I, cause that's pretty much what I have to get. You know, if I get, and if I get, if I get a victory, you know, there's a possibility I might, it depends on what everybody else do, but right. if I get a first round stoppage, I'm pretty much secure in my spot, especially exactly. taking out, you know, the number one guy. So I just got to go in there and, and and give it my best and let everything go, and uh and I'm gonna die. I'm gonna, I'm gonna live or die on that shield. So it's well, gonna be I fun. Mean, listen, I'm so <laughs> excited for this fight because you know that just as you express the attitude that you have to come in here with, but also your opponent is sitting. Capelos is sitting at the top of the standings. He's got a hundred percent like finish rate. Mm-hmm. How do you prepare for that? Because that's a whole different mentality when you know the type of fighter that you're going in against. So, yeah. you know, walk me through, if you can, because obviously you can't give us all yeah. the game plan, but yeah, yeah, what, yeah. <laughs> what are some of the things that you are preparing for? What did you work on in getting ready for this fight? Well, he's a very explosive fighter. He likes to uh, he likes to start it early, you know, bring bring the fight to, to me, to his opponents. Um, so we're ready for that. Uh, I'm in a situation where that's that's something that's, going to that I need <laughs> because mm-hmm. going where you're going for a first round uh, finish, you got to be engaged. You got to get in. And right. uh, he likes to fight that style. And, you know, you know, I'm going to go in there. I'm going I'm to bring it. I'm going I'm to go for the kill early uh, in the first round throughout the first round. You know, I'm going to be patient. But, you know, if I have an opportunity to exploit it, you know, I'm going for it, whether it's on the feet or on the ground. Um, he likes to finish. I like to finish. I, I, my first two fights were um, the distance, but the rest of them, I finished them all. All right. my, my my wins were finished. Most of them in the first round, and I think one in the second round. So, um, like him, you know, I finished fights, and so this is definitely going to be a lot of fireworks on this one. Absolutely. And so I want to kind of switch gears again because mm-hmm. you know I love it when you have fighters that truly love the sport, not just I love fighting because I love mm-hmm. to fight. Uh, and you're you're very active on Twitter, you know, just talking yeah. about MMA in general, yeah. doesn't matter which promotion. So yeah. being that you're a coach, as you said yeah. earlier, you look at things a little bit differently when you have that experience. Yeah. And being that you clearly love the sport, mm-hmm. well, pick your brain a little bit on some some predictions on some big fights coming up. Yeah, yeah. So, so first and foremost, I want to start in technically your division, but in another organization. So okay. this weekend at uh, Vegas, or uh, USC Vegas 30, I believe, we mm-hmm. have Cyril Gunn fighting Alexander Volkov. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Who have both been on a tear. What are your thoughts on that fight, and who do you think pulls out the win? <sighs> that, was the, that was a tough one. Um, I was looking at before a couple of, a couple of my friends, we were, we were talking about it, and 
Um, not sure because, like you said, both of them have been on the tear. Um, mm-hmm. I'm leaning a little bit to Volkov. You know, Volkov has been in some some tough fights, and he's pulled it through. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's he's a very technical fighter, and and he can finish you know just as well as anybody. So I'm leaning that way. But at the end of the day, you know, with heavyweights, it don't take but only but so much. You know, with these fists connect. Right. So you know, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. But I'm leaning Volkov. Awesome. Awesome. And then I want to ask you about what could arguably be the biggest fight in MMA this year uh, in the Conor McGregor and Dustin Poirier rematch. Yes. Um, there's, I, I've talked to a lot of people about this fight and, and mm-hmm. everybody seems to have a different take. And it's so funny because you start the conversation and somebody's mm-hmm. like, yeah, it's definitely going to be something. Mm-hmm. And then by the end of the conversation, they're like, well, I think McGregor might be able to pull this out. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on this fight? Uh, you know, I, I called the second fight and it went the way I said really? it was. I, I said, I said, McGregor is going to start off strong, but Poirier got them bombs and he's mm-hmm. going to eventually, you know, capitalize off of it. And he did with, a, with an amazing knockout. But what kind of showed me in the first round was, you know, he still got it. And, um, Mm-hmm. And he's definitely he's definitely bringing the power. Um, I'm still sticking with Poirier. Poirier has been doing more recently. He's been more active. He's been mm-hmm. fighting big fights. He just fought him already. Um, now you know, depending on their camps, you know how they adjust. You know, and it's, and it's, it's like a playoff of basketball right now. You know, right. anytime you play a team all, uh, multiple times, you know, back to back or whatever it may be, um, you learn from the past exchange. You know, and you make adjustments. And uh, you capitalize like with the Clippers, they made adjustments. They were down 2-0 and they made yep. adjustments and ended up winning the series. So, you know, right now it's one and one. Um, Poirier just got the best of them. Uh, his confidence should be through the roof, as it should be. And uh, McGregor, um, he has an opportunity to get that back. So, you know, it, I, I feel if it if it if if McGregor gets on him early and can wobble him um, and take advantage of that, I think he could pull it off. But uh, I think the longer the fight goes, uh, Poirier is going to get settled in and um, ended up, you know, taking it by finish, I believe. Truly believe whether it's, whether it's a guillotine or he catching with another one of them rights, I think Poirier gets the job done. Yeah, I promise you on fight night, if that's the case, I'll send you, I'll send you a mm. message on, on Twitter like you were right. <laughs> you called it. Uh, so, so one last one for me, and then I'll let you get back to it. Um, obviously, the PFL kind of made waves this year uh, with the introduction of the boxing quote, Clarissa Shields oh, into yeah. the PFL. You know, again, as a coach, because when you coach, you look at things a little bit differently mm-hmm. when, you're, when you're looking at fights. What did you think about her debut performance? I thought she did an amazing job. It, I, I knew she would do well on her feet, obviously, she mm-hmm. as the GOAT of, you know, boxing. Um, but what surprised me was her, you know, defense on the ground and even her offense on the ground when she got on the top position and she kept her down and she kept dropping them bombs. And when she got down and she got, she was on her back and she was in a, in a position where she could have lost the fight. And to be able to fight back out of that, you rarely see boxers be able to, you know, get out of that situation. Um, so, you know, her training over there in um, Arizona, uh, mm-hmm. you know, they've been they've been putting in some work. I, I believe working with Holly Holm has probably been the best fit for her. Yeah. Being that Holly Holmes come from boxing and kickboxing background and had to had to learn on the fly. She didn't have nobody as a high level of striker like her to help guide her, you know, with it. That right. was an MMA experience. She had to figure it out and had years to do that and at a high level. So I, I feel that uh, Clarissa working with her probably, you know, she got a, um, a little bit of fast forward appro- uh, approaching her, her learning curve because, um, you know, being able to work with somebody as good as her and a high level striker like her to right. keep her keep her, you know what I'm saying, um, going on her feet and be able to, you know, take us to the wrestling and, and uh, no coaches over there at Jackson Winker, you know, top notch and they've been in the game for a while. And to see her um, learn that fast because, you know, mm-hmm. people talk, like the opponent she fought was not a new opponent. She fought an right. opponent who had many fights, you know, um, mm-hmm. it might not, she might not had the best record, but she's still been in the cage on in, in many fights. Yeah, she's a brown belt jujitsu. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. she knows and her stuff, right. Exactly. So in order for her to come there and dominate and finish the way she finished on the ground, raining down punches, you know, I was, um, I was, I was more than surprised and uh, I was very proud of, you know, 
of her and what she accomplished because you rarely see boxers get in and have that type of success. Um, now, the next thing, and maybe, I don't know if he's going to bring it up, but I'm going to bring it up uh, as far as her and the organization and Kayla Harrison in the organization. I mean, um, <laughs> you went there, not me, not me. I don't want Kayla back to me, all hey, right? I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it. She can come beat me up. But um, <laughs> Kayla is just, Kayla, have, obviously she has the more experience now being Tom yeah. in the cage. And her mentality, which comes from, you know, that wrestling judo a world she's come from is just, you know, she's just vicious and she's, she's a savage. She's a she's a force. Ooh. But if 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 somehow Clarissa can can have the takedown defense or, or be able to keep her distance on her feet, then it's gonna she's gonna be in a world of trouble. Yeah. Um but I truly believe the superior style to have in MMA is that wrestling grappling background really there's yes. a surprise that a wrestling guy <laughs> he's a wrestling coach no no listen i'm giving you a hard time i oh, yeah. i absolutely agree and i think that for me that was one of the things watching the fight like in the third round when we finally saw her give us like a legit sprawl yeah and i was like yeah oh, no, no, that's, sprawl. <laughs> like, oh, that's, what? That, that's not accidental like yep. she clearly knew what she was doing and, mm -hmm. and i think she's only been training what four six months like yeah that was yep. insane insane to see yep. the level of progression she still got a lot of work to do on the ground yeah. there's no question Most about def. that um but but that that sprawling for her to be able to turn it around in the scramble in the third like that yeah to your point is is really impressive yeah and if she can keep up that pace uh the way she's learning obviously she's a phenomenal athlete mm -hmm. um you know if she can keep learning at at that level and you know maybe in the next couple of years i'm not saying this year out and this year if she fought kayla this year i, I believe Kayla just yeah. runs through her. I must be honest. Kayla's gonna run through her. But if she can keep uh training and, and getting this experience and and um you know get more MMA experience, get more grappling experience, um, she's gonna be a handful to deal with. Yeah, and, and one last thing about her, and then you know, I keep saying one last thing, but I'm loving this conversation <laughs> so much. So this is gonna be the last thing. Like it, and watching her, I know for me. I sit there and I think like, first and foremost, there are not a lot of black women, not a lot of African American women in the sport. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and you've got like the Angie, Angie Overkill Hills and yeah, you know yep. her and the Dobsons that are coming up, but yeah. they're not quite there yet. And when you start thinking titles and title picture, mm -hmm. you know, you want it for them, yeah. but you, you just don't know. And, and, you know, I'm looking at Clarissa Shields and I'm like, if she can, figure out which it looks like she's incredibly coachable she's learning like mm -hmm. she may end up being the first black woman that has mm -hmm. an mma title yep. what would that mean to you if if that were to happen man that, that would that would be awesome um and, and i tell a lot of people even in with wrestling you know um we usually don't really mess with wrestling like that um, right you know as as african americans you know we look at basketball we look at, um, you know, even baseball more. We look at, you know, uh, basketball, football. You know, most of, most of our athletes head that direction. Um, and and uh, we and we and as a coach, I try to you know get more people involved in wrestling. Uh, our main thing is the is the uniform. That was my main thing. Why well, I didn't want to do it. I was be honest. I almost didn't wrestle just because of that. Listen, one I I grew up in the same county as Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. I promise yep. you, this is the same yep. thing here. That's yep. always the issue is the mm -hmm. singlet. <laughs> yep. So, you know, in in wrestling, we usually don't, you know, lean that way. We don't see a lot of that. Um, right. Same thing with like with MMA. Um, we started, we starting to get into it more, but, you know, we, we're not typically looking at wrestling. Boxing, we do, you know, boxing right. definitely been for, for years, but wrestling and stuff like that, jujitsu, um, we're just now starting to to get in it like that, you know, but as far as other people, especially Brazilians, people overseas, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's what they do. You know what right. I mean? And now um, more and more of us are starting to come over. And so to have somebody at, especially at the pedigree she was at, she didn't need right. to come do the MMA. She didn't need to. She was she was already on go status of, a, of an athlete. Exactly. But she knows the type of person she is. She's up for the challenge. And I, I commend her for even stepping, stepping in the uh, cage because um, like you see Mayweather doing all this stuff and he does, he's not talking about getting in the cage. Not, uh, none, not of, none of these wonder. guys, <laughs> none of these Paul guys are talking about getting in the cage and fight MMA. Right. Why? Because this ain't no joke. Right. It's hard. <laughs> this, is not, this, is, this is a whole different beast. And I love boxing. 
I love all types of martial arts. I love boxing. Um, I believe that, that that's the key in this, even in this sport is having good boxing. But when you have knees coming at you, elbows coming at you, kicks coming at you, people lifting you over your head, mm-hmm. it's a whole different, whole different game. I, my nerves are totally different. I had nerves when I wrestled. I had some boxing matches. I've had, I have nerves when I box, but it's a whole different story when you got them tiny gloves on and you got people's shins coming at you. You got people trying to lift you up over your head and slam right. you. This is a whole, this is a whole nother game. And, um, you know, I commend her to, to stepping in there because she's an absolute. Well, Mo, I commend you for taking all of this time to talk to us today. Thank you so, so much. Um, you know, I, I always tell fighters, I don't wish you good luck because that's an insult to all of the work that you put in. But I do hope that all of your work and preparation pays off for you in the cage this week. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you. Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews, and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.